Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video we're going to be looking at some more Imperial Fists, uh, but this time they're going to be Heavy Bolter equipped Marines. So Games Workshop sent me one of the new Heavy Weapon Packs and I decided to build a 10-man squad using Heavy Bolters because that <laughs> suits the Imperial Fist pretty well and they do get benefits for using uh, Heavy Bolter uh, weapons. Uh, you will notice that the Sergeant here, he is built a little bit differently to the other Beakies in the unit. Uh, but the main focus on this video is to show how to paint the sergeant in particular uh, using just uh, paints and contrast paints. So you don't need to use an airbrush and you won't need to use any oil paint either. A few people have mentioned that uh, they don't, they're not comfortable using oil paints or they don't have access to an airbrush. So I just want to show you can do a very similar effect. Uh, the other marine that you saw there that came in that was already uh, painted yellow, that was airbrushed yellow. And the idea is I'm going to be painting one using an airbrush and one this one without and you'll be able to see the difference and decide which one uh, is more suitable for you obviously if you don't have an airbrush then the airbrush one is not suitable for you but uh, if you do have an airbrush you could still paint all the marines by hand like this uh, because it, it does give a slightly different look you get a, a slightly more uh, weathered worn and kind of textured look to it the first thing that we're doing here is using some mornfang brown this is quite heavily watered down around about two or three parts water to one part paint uh, now the problem is this takes a little bit, well it takes a lot longer than using an airbrush, but it takes a while because you have to do multiple coats. It, it's watered down because you need to do uh, thin layers. If you have the paint thicker, it will cover it, you can probably cover it in one coat if you have uh, almost straight from the pot. I mean you don't really want to go straight from the pot, it's probably a bit too thick still, but uh, even if you just water it down a tiny amount, you could probably get it done in one coat, but it's still going to give you a, like a bumpy finish. And if you notice when I'm applying this as well, uh, I'm not dry brushing the model, this is just stippling all over and you probably need to do kind of two or three coats. It is it's quite quick, it's not going to take you a massive amount of time, it's just that it, obviously using an airbrush is significantly quicker. So here I'm using the Messy Desert, uh, this is not the yellow colour that the, the marine is going to be, so don't worry if you think, oh well, no, this is uh, a bit um, kind of desaturated and pale looking. I want my Imperial Fist to look nice and yellow. This is just to get a base colour down so that I can build on top of it uh, with the yellow so that the yellow looks nice and clean. You will find straight away that it looks horrible when you, you start doing this. Uh, you will notice again that the paint is very heavily watered down and it's the same thing again. You have to do maybe even four coats. Uh, you could... Looking at how I'm applying it now, the paint is very, very watered down. Also, it looks like it's very patchy. Don't worry about that. Those are just bubbles, and the bubbles kind of um, pull the uh, the pigment to them. But as the but the paint dries, the bubbles pop, and they, they pop quite quickly. Uh, and then the paint will spread out a bit due to all the, the water in there. Uh, it still dries patchy, but it doesn't look anywhere near as uh, kind of obnoxious looking as the, you know the heavily dotted look. Uh, but as I said, you will need to do multiple layers. It's really important that you keep the paint thin, though. You don't want to end up with a very heavily textured surface at the end because it'll just look like uh, excess paint, very clumpy. It'll uh, cover over details, and you just won't be happy re with the results. Um, so, I mean, I am trying to show you how to do it uh, as quick as I can while still looking uh, pretty good at the end, but I... I have to admit that using the airbrush is quicker, but as again, as I say again, you do get a slightly uh, more weathered and kind of interesting look. The 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 airbrush version is very, uh, I'd say, clinical looking when you finish uh, when it's finished, but it is easier and quicker. Uh, so it, I mean, you could do like a combination of both as well. There's no, nothing stopping you from doing the Mornfang Brown and the Messy Desert layers with the airbrush and then doing say a final uh, layer using the uh, Ural yellow color that I'm using here uh, and that will still give you kind of like a patchy finish a more uh, sort of natural look to it um, well, I say natural I mean sort of like more textured uh, it, the thing is it just looks more interesting I at this stage it, it looks horrible I know but by the time you've glazed over it at the end and put some varnish on things it really does look uh, just a little bit more interesting it's just a bit more time consuming I am gonna do uh, like a couple more Imperial Fist troop videos I'm sure you're probably a bit bored of them by now but uh, there are the new contrast paints coming out and they do have an Imperial Fist yellow contrast color so I'm gonna try out some different uh, methods 
just to see what I can do. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I, I do have some plans uh, for the, the new Imperial Fist Yellow uh, contrast color. And I'm gonna see what I can do with that. Uh, it, my suspicion is it's gonna be quite a vibrant yellow in comparison to this. So it's gonna be a case of, uh, do you prefer the more kind of toned down, dirty looking yellows or the really bright yellows in that case? Uh, so there you go. I, I mean, it's, it was the same thing again, pretty much there with the yellow uh, covering the whole model. I say covering the whole model. You really kind of want to focus on where the light falls a little bit. So you can see there where it's behind the gun or in the shadows underneath, you know, the inside of the legs or uh, under the armpits, all kind of areas like that. There's obviously a lot yes, less yellow paint that's um, built up. And that's actually quite nice. So when we get to the contrast wash, that will then help to uh, sort of even everything out, make the transition smoother. It'd still be a little bit of texture there, obviously, uh, but it will help to create shadow uh, definition and depth to the model. Like if everything's highlighted or painted with the same level of yellow, like if you just sprayed yellow over the whole model, it looks very flat and boring. Whereas with this, because I've got like a focus slightly on the forward uh, facing elements, so the front of the shoulder pad, I think you can see there, just a little bit more yellow towards the front, the face and the chest, his uh, foot stepping forward is more yellow. And it's the same again on the back. So the the leg sticking upwards as, uh, you know, the, the left, his left leg there, as we're looking at it on top of it, that my finger's resting on, that's a bit more yellow than the front of that leg. And that just gives depth all the way around. It's almost like you can see the light falling on the model. Now I know it still looks a bit messy at this stage, but uh, the the lighting element is starting to be uh, to become uh, more clear. Uh, here I'm using Vallejo model color black just to fill in. First of all, the black elements on the model, so the uh, gun and the eyes. Uh, those are the only two bits that you need to paint black really in terms of you know just filling areas in this section that i'm doing now is a black stripe that the black stripe is to den uh, denote that he's a heavy weapon marine however this is the sergeant and so, so technically i haven't painted this correctly the sergeant has a different colored helmet to the other marines you will notice when i finished that the other the mark six speaking marine uh, he also has the black stripe down his head so there's nothing to differentiate between the two in terms of one being a sergeant, one just being a, a normal uh, heavy weapon marine, uh, you know, so all heavy weapon marines have this black stripe down the, the middle of the head if they're imperial fists. Uh, then, for a sergeant, I, th um, I, I can't remember offhand what the color. Is. I think he might have like a black helmet with a white stripe, or it's one of these anyway. <laughs> uh, but regardless, because the model has a plume on his head and I paint that as a, like a red stripe, and the red stripe usually indicates a sergeant uh, for the Imperial Fist, uh, then that's how I'm treating it, so, uh, so I can keep his head yellow. It just makes it a little bit quicker and easier for me to paint, uh, and I'm just relying on the red plume to indicate that he's a sergeant, but technically speaking, he probably would have a different colored helmet uh, compared to the rest of the, uh, the squad. Uh, so now, next thing is to paint all the trim. I really like the look of this model with the Mark III shoulder pads. However, this really slows down the painting, having the trim on, and particularly the Mark III trim. Uh, there's a lot more trim here to paint. And now it's only gonna add a few minutes to this particular Marine, but if you were doing this to a lot of Marines, the time uh, kind of adds up significantly. So if you're painting a whole 10 or even a 20 man unit, and you have to paint the trim on all of them, that's gonna add a few hours extra. Uh, and not just in the case of painting in the trim for this stage where you're painting the, the metallics, uh, but in terms of highlighting, highlighting them as well, because at the end, uh, when I start adding the yellow glazes to really make the, the yellow pop out and you'll see why uh, towards the end of the video. Um, but when you start adding that, you're having to paint around the trim. You don't get such quick, easy brush strokes. So that take, makes the shoulders take longer as well, uh, just for painting the yellow part, not even including highlighting the metallics after they've been shaded down. Uh, and you can also see for the Mark VI Marine here, uh, it looks really nice and bold. Now you can see that I've got a bit of speckling there from the airbrush, that's just me being quick and lazy. Um, but you don't need to worry about that. The, uh, the contrast wash that we put on later is gonna hide a lot of that as well in the same way that it's going to hide uh, any excess amount of the sort of dappled texture effect 
on the uh, the hand painted marine here. You can see I just painted both the shoulder pads the gloss varnish, and I'm using uh, Vallejo Mecca uh, gloss varnish. You don't have to use uh, Mecca gloss varnish. Uh, you know any gloss varnish that should do the job, but that's just so I can get a nice smooth surface for applying the the decals. Uh, here you can see I'm using Microset. Uh, I've mentioned this in previous videos. I don't bother with Microsol. I think it's a waste of time. <laughs> you can get the job done using Microset uh, and Microset alone. I do a quick uh, layer of Microset first so that the uh, decal will start um, dissolving from both sides uh, and then place the, the decal on, then do a quick uh, another layer of Microset and then you just have to leave it. There's no uh, speeding up this process is a, is a chemical reaction and it will eat away the, uh, the plastic film. Um, once it's dry, give it another layer of gloss varnish just to hide any uh, kind of like minor little elements left of the plastic film. So now it's, you've got like a shiny shoulder, but that, uh, that won't matter uh, because we will be using some matte varnish. Now this is, at this stage, we're going to go straight onto the a contrast wash and I'm using Dark Oath Flesh here. Um, I'm, but the, the main thing that you will need to get is some contrast medium. You do have to work quite quickly when you do this as well. Uh, that is the one negative about using this in comparison with uh, using oils. Now I say that's a negative but it's also a positive so this dries much much quicker than oils. The benefit of do using the oils is that you can push the paint around, don't have to worry about mistakes or too much build up. You just at your own leisure, you can just take off any excess and don't you don't have to worry about it drying. This you have a very short window to get this done. So you can see I've added a small amount of uh, contrast medium to my well palette there, and now I'm just flooding the marine, but not all over. Only do this on the areas that you want to keep bright. So that again, this will be the chest, the head the front of the shoulder pads and any parts of the model that are catching the light. So you can see there, like on his backpack, that's a little bit more yellow, the upwards facing rear leg, and uh, the, the bum plate, <laughs> you know, bits like that. At this stage, what you'll find is you have got a massive amount of extra contrast uh, paint and contrast medium on the model. You need to take off this excess, and this is really important. Uh, the contrast paint and the contrast medium uh, when it dries it is a little bit thicker like it definitely leaves a deposit behind if you don't take off this, ex this excess it will fill details and leave it looking smooth so this is particularly important on like all the ribbing in between the armor plates but any crevice and things where it's uh, like you get more than normal so on a smooth surface it's not going to be an issue but anywhere where there's the the paint all flows into take off the excess because it will leave like a thick uh, layer in those areas. Uh, for this, you want to use a, a large brush as well. I managed to find myself, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think I had any, but I had a, a size for Artis Apis brush. If you can get a large brush, you can obviously cover the model quicker. And the quicker you can do it, the quicker you can get the process, uh, cover the, the whole model uh, before any paint starts to dry. If any paint starts to dry during that process before you've um, covered the areas properly, when you start adding the contrast medium on top, uh, it's going to reactivate sort of elements of the dried paint and then you're going to be crying because it's going to leave like tea stain marks or coffee stain marks. So what that is is where parts started to dry and the parts still wet and when you move the wet away the dry part has a hard edge uh, and it's very hard to hide those sections. But anyway, with that out of the way, now we're on to, uh, this is the fun bit, this is the bit that I enjoy the most on painting the model, and this is glazing uh, yellow back over the areas. Now, uh, it's quite important, I did miss uh, out a little section in the video there. Uh, after the contrast has dried, give the whole model a coat of matte varnish. You can paint it on by hand, or you can paint it by airbrush. Obviously, airbrush is quicker, and you'll get a more even coverage, but make sure it's quite watered down as well. You don't want something that's going to... Um, Again, leave a thick layer, so there's quite a few layers on this model. Uh, and you really want to try and keep away from um, excessive uh, thick layers because it's just going to obscure any detail. This glazing layer, uh, and by definition, the glaze is going to be a thin layer, but this is very heavily watered down. Uh, what you'll find is as well, because of the matte varnish on the model, the paint sort of flows really nicely. It gets, The thing with matte varnishes is uh, they have 
a very very a small like micro texture to them and this is natural and this is to stop the shine when it hits the model the light diffuses on the the kind of like broken surface and what happens is because of that when you apply the very watered down glaze on top uh, the paint sort of floods into that textured area and uh, sort of bleeds out a little bit you have to be a little bit careful when you're applying the paint so make sure uh, and this, I mean, this should, should be standard when you're applying a glaze, but you take the excess off the brush. If you put a massive amount of paint, like this very heavily watered down paint, onto the model, uh, especially with the matte varnish on there, it'll just bleed out and cover areas that you really don't want it to go onto. Um, now, the main thing when applying this yellow is you're not painting the whole model. This is just purely focused on the focal points. So I mentioned before when I, I was doing the, uh, the stippling on of the, the base layers, uh, but it's going to be the head, chest, the forward part of the shoulders, other pieces like, you know, the, the arms sticking outwards, uh, just little areas like that. But don't spend a long time, don't really do any on the lower legs. Uh, maybe the back, like so on this one I do you do some of the back leg that I've got, again, my finger resting on. Uh, the top of that I do put a bit of the yellow on. And just to reiterate, this is Uriel Yellow. Uh, but the legs get covered in weathering powder, so it's really not worth spending a lot of time uh, putting any yellow glaze on those. Uh, you could spend a long time doing this, uh, you know, putting yellow all over the model, and you will get a really nice, strong yellow finish. Uh, it'll just take a long time. And because, especially for horse heresy, you, you tend to need a lot of marines. Uh, I, I find doing it this way, where it's kind of like selective highlighting, uh, light volume highlighting, you get a really nice look to the model. You can you leave a lot of areas that you don't have to spend massive amounts of time on. Uh, but just the indication of having small sections that are, are highlighted up nicely, they look, uh, they, they sort of, and again, I'm, I'm just repeating myself, but they, they add depth to the model. So you get these areas that like stand out more. They, they, you know, they make these areas the focal points. And then the, the areas that you haven't added the glaze layers to, they, uh, they just, they, they, they're kind of like background noise. People don't pay attention to those. They just pay attention to the bright, uh, really strong yellow areas. And the yellow areas look stronger and brighter because they're next to darker areas that haven't been highlighted. So by, um, you know, by actually leaving areas that are less painted or less brightly painted, uh, you actually make the yellow areas look even stronger. Uh, you can see there I've got two yellows now on the uh, the wet palette in the top left. It's the same color; it's still Uriel yellow. Uh, the only thing is the new yellow is a little bit thicker so the first yellow that i've been using with the glazing uh, that is watered down around about i'd say three or four parts again test it <laughs> before you apply it uh, the weather at the moment is a little bit warmer in the uk so paint is drying out slightly quicker uh, so you might need to add a bit more water if you're in a hotter air environment uh, you know, you just have to learn to adapt to whatever the, the environment is. Um, so every time I give a paint uh, consistency mix, it is very dependent on the environment that you paint in and how well you can control the paints as well. Uh, but having the thicker paint there uh, just allows you to do sort of like a few neater edge highlights here and there, uh, just to give like a cleaner, sharper edge highlight. Uh, you can also see uh, I've done a couple of little dots of yellow on the uh, the Roman numeral 7 on the shoulder pad just to indicate a bit of weathering there. Uh, but now we're moving on to the heavy bolter. Uh, for the colours for this, I'm using German grey, neutral grey. Uh, I also put down some, uh, I think it's like a dark sea grey, something like that anyway. Um, but you don't need it. <laughs> In fact, you only need uh, one color. Like if you just add black and white, uh, you could get this, the same effect. Uh, just add a, uh, you just need like three shades of gray. Uh, um, but you can see on the wet palette there, I've done a, a couple of extra ones. You want the paint quite thin as well. If anything, this uh, German gray that I'm applying at the moment, 
uh, it's a little bit thicker than uh, it needs to be because uh, that makes it then harder to blend into the uh, the black um, the body of the gun you know the main black element uh, so I will have to go back and just uh, work those transitions a bit more the idea with the placement for this uh, German grey is so anything that's upwards facing gets a layer of German grey uh, and also which is very easy to work out for the upwards facing parts but the side of the gun uh, with, you know with the ejection port area and stuff like that that uh, it technically probably wouldn't have that much uh, gray on it and you can see what I did was I painted around about halfway up on the gun and just painted flat parts of uh, gray on that now you can leave that uh, a bit darker if you want uh, what I've done here is I've uh, I kind of like mix the colors together so although I've got neutral gray on the wet palette uh, I've not actually taken it quite up to that this is more kind of like a mix of neutral gray and German gray but also uh, it's quite heavily watered down at this stage as well this will just it's almost like glazing so you you just seen how I did the yellow uh, doing multiple layers of the yellow on the shoulders and chest area same for this uh, you get like a smoother easier finish uh, like you know, better transition uh, just by using the thinner paint now the thinner paint obviously uh, is more translucent and you won't get a hard mark but that's fine you don't really want hard marks on the gun at this stage and because the German grey and neutral grey uh, they cover really well you can get away with having thinner paint and still having a, a pretty smooth uh, clean mark when you apply it So there you can see I went with, uh, so this is a slight mix of German grey and the uh, model colour grey, uh, just to knock back some of the, the grey element uh, and help with the transitions a bit. I'm not spending a lot of time on this, I think you can see it's a very rough transition. This is obviously a uh, tabletop mini, so even though it's a sergeant, these guys will be dying by the bucket load and it, it's uh, not that worth spending uh, massive amounts of time on them. Uh, so then the, the final thing to do here, and this is where I'm just using uh, straight neutral grey, uh, is just to pick out all the upwards facing edges. It's pretty simple to do, don't overload the brush, I'm using a size 00, although it's fairly worn down now. This is kind of like my trash brush uh, for very very quick painting uh, this um, I mean for this model it's fine for a display level model I probably want a slightly uh, cleaner uh, neater brush <laughs> by this stage uh, but yeah just paint all the upwards facing uh, edges and the side edges I've also used some model color black on the mo uh, the bolter here and just painted a couple of scratches on so now I can go back again with the uh, neutral grey and just kind of very quickly pick out a few pit places here and there uh, to make it look like the uh, the weapons had a bit of damage on it so it's been knocked around a bit and all uh, the aim that you're looking for here is to paint the lower edge it'll make it look more like a three-dimensional chip on it And that's pretty much it. It's uh, very quick and easy to do that. Uh, I would say, like for me, <laughs> the gun looks a bit too grey. Um, if I spent a bit more time on it, I probably would have watered down some uh, model colour black or maybe a bad and black, and just glazed over you know, a few areas just to uh, knock them down a bit. I might actually do that um, after the video now that looking at it because uh, it, it does look a bit too grey but um, regardless you know you, you have something that looks like a, a highlighted gun uh, for his plume here I it, so I missed that out on the video originally that was just painted Mephiston red uh, for highlighting it I'm using uh, straight up to Wild Rider Reds so this is a big jump uh, you want it fairly watered down just so that it doesn't leave uh, too hard a mark but you can paint these in sort of rough lines uh, so if you turn them upside down and drag the brush towards you it uh, if you're following the direction of the hair on it uh, that helps to you know give that sort of indication you don't have to put the highlights and actually it's quite important that you don't see I've only put the highlights sort of like in the uh, left third of the plume 
uh, that helps with the light direction indication so obviously the uh, all the yellow glazing that I put on the model that didn't um, cover the whole model it's only in the the way that where, where I want the light to hit it and so I've done the same thing with the, the plume as well or, but do remember to do the back side of the plume uh, you don't have to highlight it quite as bright or neatly uh, but it does uh, you know when you look at the model from the back it will just look a bit more finished uh, for the eyes here I'm using Sotec Green uh, my favorite blue color and uh, there's a, a couple of things here one uh, the video would not sync with the wet palette so you can see here I am um, slightly off with that uh, start the first thing I did was use some Sotec Green. It's almost straight from the pot, just a little bit watered down, and I block in the eye. Then I put some Sotec Green on the wet palette and I water it down to basically a glaze. It's around about four parts water to one part paint. Then paint uh, from about halfway down the front of the face up towards the eye socket. Uh, it's really important that you paint the brush in that direction. Don't paint away from the eye, paint towards the eye. It doesn't even matter if you go into the eye and you wipe out any element of the black that was there before uh, but it's really important because when it, you move the uh, brush off of the model it leaves a paint deposit de behind and if you've painted away from the eye that paint deposit of the blue uh, will be quite strong in the middle of the face uh, whereas you want it, the paint to be strong close to the eye so you know it's, the idea is that the uh, the color fades away as it gets further away from the light source which and the light source is the eye so here you can see um, I think I can't quite understand how the uh, the wet palette um, has worked in this way what I'm doing here so I'm adding p3 moral white and I'm mixing that into the Sotec green so really at this stage on the wet palette there should only have been Sotec green on there and then I'm mixing some white uh, I couldn't, for the life of me, find on the uh, the video that I'd recorded of the wet palette anywhere where there was just plain Sotec green. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but you can kind of see the whole process that's appeared now on <laughs> the wet palette, where I've added a bit of white at one stage and a bit more white for the next stage. Uh, but basically all you have to do, uh, after you've added a bit of white to the Sotec green, cover over the eye, leaving a bit around the edge, and also paint the uh, lower edge of the eye socket. Uh, that will indicate the light from the eye hitting the uh, edge of the uh, the eye socket. And then you do the same thing again. As you add more white, you go over it again, but you uh, make the area smaller. Uh, you might find that the uh, as you do a layer, it's a little bit translucent, so maybe do a couple of layers of the same color. It really depends on how strong you want the eyes to look. Uh, but he, here again you can see uh, this will be the third stage highlight and this is adding a bit more of the P3 Moral White to the uh, already highlighted uh, Sotec Green. So if, <laughs> if I'd actually recorded it properly you would have seen then the white transition onto the palette uh, in the top left there. Uh, so this is uh, the final highlight with add with a small amount of Sotec Green in. I will be adding another highlight of white for the final bit. Uh, in this one, in this video, you can see I'm actually adding a little highlight right at the bottom of the eye there, uh, just to increase the intensity of the highlight. I did a pretty rough job <laughs> of that um, highlight. Uh, you can always go back with some of the previous colors. Uh, and tidy it up a bit afterwards if you want to do a slightly better eye than I've done here. However, do remember this is zoomed in quite a bit. Uh, so if you, when you look at this in the hand, it, you know, it doesn't actually look too bad. It's it's fairly neat. And on the tabletop, you wouldn't notice that at all. Uh, but you know, it's up to you if you want to uh, spend a little bit of time <laughs> uh, neating in it and painting it a bit better than I've done there. Uh, he and you can see the the final highlight here, just using the pure white. And this is kind of like. Uh, a third in from the right hand side so it's not directly in the middle of the eye it's slightly to the right hand side of it one thing I just want to uh, mention actually is the black stripe on the forehead uh, so when I applied the grays on the uh, heavy bolter there I did put uh, the dark gray in the middle of the the forehead there and just blended it in a little bit of the sides just so that it sort of matches the highlight 
from the yellow that's on the head as well. Uh, just here I'm doing a little bit of chipping on the model. Uh, this is Rhinox Hide. Uh, just put a very small amount of paint on the brush. Make sure you wipe off any excess. Uh, really important that you have a sharp point on the, the paintbrush when you're applying it. And just do a few little dots and dashes here and there. Maybe focus on the edges of armor panels, uh, you can see like on uh, just above the eye there, um, places like that, edges naturally get a few more chips, put loads of them on the feet, that will disguise the fact that you haven't spent any time highlighting the feet, uh, you know, and it fills in, adds a bit of uh, interesting detail as well. Uh, and then the final thing on the armor is just to highlight a few of these chips, so I took the Uriel Yellow, added a bit of P3 Mora White, you don't have to use Mara White. In fact, if you don't want to mix any colors, you can go straight and use some Dawn Yellow. Uh, that'll look very similar to this. Get the same kind of effect, like a light yellow. That's all you need. Is it? It's just a light yellow. Uh, and you're, so it's the same as the uh, chips on the gun. You're just picking out uh, a few areas and highlighting the lower edge. Uh, if you make a mess with this highlight, like you know, maybe your hands aren't uh, quite steady enough or whatever. Uh, you can then go back with the Rhinox hide and just cut into the highlight and that will make the highlight line really sharp and clean and it'll probably actually look a little bit better than what I've done there. Uh, and then the final part on the model is just to uh, quickly uh, highlight the metal areas that are left. Uh, so obviously these have had a, they were already painted with uh, exhaust manifold. Uh, but because they had the contrast layer and also uh, the matte varnish on top, uh, they're dulled right down now, which means they're perfect for highlighting. Uh, so here I'm just going straight on with the exhaust manifold. Uh, you saw that I showed some chrome there as well in the video. You don't actually need to use the chrome. It's a very bright, shiny color. Obviously, chrome is very bright and shiny. Uh, and I found that I didn't really need it to stand out you know, the, the highlights I'm placing on with uh, just a straight um, exhaust manifold from the pot uh, are bright enough. However, if you find maybe on some areas that you just want a little bit more pop, you can add uh, some of the chrome. Just be careful with it, with it, like I said, because the chrome is super duper bright. Um, the idea for putting these highlights on, uh, just hold the model under a lamp and you'll see naturally where the highlights sort of lie and then do a very sketchy sort of scribble <laughs> it's on it's the easiest on the ammo hopper uh, that's actually one of the parts on the model that i like the most um the uh, the nice curved cylinder there really nice for putting highlight lines on uh or do the same on all the other parts of the model so the the chest here you're not painting the whole of the chest again with exhaust manifold you're just picking out a few sections the straps on the side there, on the bright yellow side, those are uh, that gets covered in the exhaust manifold, but not in the recesses. On the uh, right hand side, as we look at it, uh, where the chest also goes darker, just pick out a few edges here and there. You don't want to paint all the trim again or anything like that. You're just picking out a few areas to get bright parts on it. On the the trim of the shoulder here, you can see in some of the curved parts, the light naturally falls in the middle of the curve. And obviously also on the rivets as well. Um, you can paint these on as scratches if you like. Uh, so you can do lines, pick out the edges, but don't go all the way around. Just pick out the brightest parts. Uh, and you know it just adds a little bit of life and shine to the model. Uh, you could also add a bit more grime to these shoulder pads as well if you wanted. Uh, in the, you know, put uh, like some orange uh, rust in there and things. <clears throat> Uh, and then the final thing that I'm doing for the model, uh, just to really, you know, make him look weathered, I'm using uh, Forge World uh, weathering powder. This is uh, dark sand, and just using like a, a an old brush, uh, like quite a big one. Scrub on a load of weathering powder onto the base and all the way over the legs. This will completely disguise the fact that you've spent no time on the legs. Really, uh, you can also get a little bit on the gun get some in the recesses uh, it just makes it like it looks like the whole model then it's got just a, a bit of dust on don't go too high though um, don't go higher than the legs on the the marine himself but on the gun you can just add a little bit of dust here and there um, when you've done done one layer uh, give it a coat of matte varnish 
uh, that will just seal it on then put some more powder on then you can uh, again do a slight covering of matte varnish again and you can also go on over it for a final time if you want uh, and because it will still be wet it'll all stick on it so that's like it's all uh, pretty much sealed now you can get this really nice built up uh, texture layer uh, and there we have it there's the the two final marines uh, you can see the heavy bolter on the airbrush marine looks just a little bit neater i spent a bit more time not too much but you know it, it looks a bit blacker um, but you can see the, the two marines there in the comparison uh, i do quite like the look of the beaky marine in terms of uh, it looks very clean and the yellow is very bright on it but also with the hand painted marine uh, he does have a like a nice element, like a bit more um, presence. <laughs> he he looks like he's got a, a bit of uh, weathering on his armor as well. But that I think fits in nicely with the fact that he's got quite a mishmash of armor panels on him, uh, and he doesn't because it's all the same colors that have been used anyway. Uh, I don't think it's that um, much of an issue in the fact that it's a different uh, techniques used between the two. Then again, it's entirely up to you. Uh, however, for me, uh, for most of my army is going to be. Uh, done using the airbrush stage just because it's quicker and I might pick out the odd uh, model here and there where I'll paint it uh, completely by hand. I probably will paint some of the character models completely by hand as well and those will most likely go on YouTube as well. Uh, but anyway that's the end of this video I hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching I've still got uh, loads of uh, heresy stuff to uh, come out so please subscribe uh, and then you can uh, watch all that when I do it as well. Um, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.